So first thing to kind of get into, of course, was UFC 264. Um, the main card obviously was um, spearheaded by Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor number three. The whole card itself from the front to the back, you know, from the early prelims to the prelims to the main card was absolutely great. Um, there's a lot to be said for not having fans in the UFC. And I think what Dana White has done, the one good thing he's done apart from, you know, because he does many, many other bad things, especially, you know, the fighters pay, the recent stuff at the moment with the, that crypto flipping sponsorship where there's a new um, cryptocurrency website has sponsored or has basically put their logo on one of the warm-up kits or the kits that the, the UFC fighters come out into the octagon with. And I think they signed a deal up to like 150 or $70 million, something insane. And then he was pressed about how much the fighters were going to get of that deal. And supposedly they're not going to get anything. That's just going straight to the UFC's um, bank account. And then I guess individually, if the fighters want to arrange a deal or work something out, they can. But in terms of breaking off the fight as a little chunk, he hasn't done that. But the one thing he has done, which you have to give him credit for, throughout the entirety of lockdown, Dana White has ensured that, from what he said anyway, we don't really know, but allegedly no one in the UFC has been let go. There's some fires have obviously been cut, but in terms of the infrastructure working in the UFC, head HQ or head office, no one has been sacked during COVID. He's hang on to everybody and essentially been able to provide all fighters who want to fight, that he would say, an opportunity to earn some money, which is definitely something you can't really um, scoff at. And he's basically proved that you can run a successful UFC card without having fans, you know, from the Fight Island stuff to the other things that have been done behind closed doors. It works mostly because, you know, for the most part, if you are training in MMA or mixed martial arts or any other form of martial arts, you tend to do a lot of sparring. Um, sometimes you tend to have a lot of kind of tournaments and competitions within different gyms. So the idea of not having spectators is something not really foreign to a lot of fighters. If anything, the spectator side of things actually makes things a bit more complicated. It kind of makes, you know, adds nerves, the bright lights and the pressure and the betting and the, all this stuff kind of and the press and the media that will kind of makes it a little bit harder for some fighters. Actually, most fighters, if not the, you know, the best you see a lot, even in basketball, they say some of the more, let's say, um, um let, let's say the, the the basketball players who aren't as big who aren't as a big profile probably shun a lot earlier especially during the early parts of lockdown when there wasn't any fans um because it was a lot like training they didn't have the pressure of playing in the big arena with the fans kind of chanting and all that sort of stuff and saying mad things to you in the crowd um so obviously you proved that but there is something to be said for having live audiences there's no real going getting around it live audiences and any kind of sport really does add to it and from the early prelims the energy was amazing um i think the early the first fight if i'm not mistaken finished in the first round it was like a it's like a it's like a guillotine choke I don't know what that is where you kind of you twist it underneath that was a fairly great finish but of course we just skip right forward to the main fight of course Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier was victorious um he um, won within the first round. This is an article here, obviously, from the BBC, kind of depicting it. That's in Poirier beats Conor McGregor after the Irishman breaks his leg in the first round. The Irishman 32 was stopped after the first round against former interim lightweight champion Dustin Poirier. Replay showed his ankle rolling over after he stepped backwards seconds before the end of the second round, sorry, the first round, and the fight was stopped by doctors handing Poirier his second straight win in their trilogy. And McGregor shouted, it's not over. He said, if I have to take this outside, let's take it outside. He added he was interviewed while sitting on the canvas with his ankle strapped to protective cars before being taken out of the ring on the stretcher. UFC President Dana White said after the fight, Conor had broken his lower tibia in his left shin. Mirakas defeated Poirier via first round TKO 178 in 2014, but the American also failed to even the score with a second round TKO UFC 257 in January. It meant the rivalry was perfectly poised heading into a trilogy bout in Las Vegas, and it was Poirier who emerged victorious in unfortunate circumstances. So the fight itself was... Um, fairly i think if answered a lot of questions it did answer questions in terms of because i think a lot of people said prior to the second fight if i'm not mistaken the the story goes conor mcgregor was allegedly training for a fight with manny pacquiao some sort of charity exhibition boxing match and that fell through last minute and then um obviously because he was training and wanted to still be active in ufc he decided to then step up and fight dustin poirier but because he spent so long obviously training in boxing he didn't necessarily have the timing or the stance or whatever required to be um proficient in obviously fighting in the ufc and again i guess in that time he was away um i guess leg kicks or calf kicks became a thing which he obviously wasn't necessarily aware of or his, or his 
coaches maybe didn't train for i don't know that's the story that, that it allegedly that alleges and so when he obviously went to fight pori in the second fight he was very front foot full front foot heavy um he obviously wasn't checking any of the kicks he wasn't in that kind of orthodox or unorthodox sort of karate stance that you sort of know him we saw sort of kind of famous for and he's kind of was fighting a little bit more like a boxer as opposed to like a mixed martial artist and eventually of course that ended up costing him and he ended up losing that fight in the second round and then of course six months later so when he was training for this one it felt as if he needed to kind of tap back into that old style Connor and he did answer that I think the opening kind of seconds of the first round he was throwing mad spinning stuff right um, he was really going for it you saw a lot more spinning attacks than I've seen in Connor's fight ever in the past previous fights for the most part and it looked to be working pretty well he kind of um, hit Dustin with a lot of leg kicks earlier on and then I guess sometime between the end of the first round um Dustin then ended up kind of getting him to the ground and getting some scoring some really good points in terms of ground and pound and controlling him and it was kind of going the way a lot of people expected it Connor really only has one way to win which is obviously on his feet but Dustin has a lot more tools in his arsenal but then obviously Connor also has the knockout power so it was perfectly poised I thought for the second round I think a lot of people are saying oh no um Dustin clearly won he was going to win he was obviously on the uh, surgency yes that's possibly true but I still think the dangerous thing about Connor is that regardless of the weight class, especially maybe heavier weight, people say he doesn't necessarily have the knockout power he did when he was the lower weight. I forgot, does it? Straw weight, whether that was underneath. Um, he still has the ability to put people to sleep. That left hand is still, you know, it's a piston. So I still think there was a possibility in the second round that he could have um, kept distance. He could have kind of prevented a few of the takedowns. He's takedown defenses and the greatest in general, but I think he could have maybe given Dustin a lot of things to worry about second round that could have made the fight a lot more interesting maybe five rounds Dustin would have probably end up winning because we know Connor's gas tank isn't the best but then sometime between the first he broke his leg and a lot of people obviously were hypothesizing oh um because this is the thing it happens a lot of UFC whenever someone loses there's a lot of revisionist history a lot of kind of going back to things and analyzing things that don't really matter so before he fought Connor everyone was saying oh he needs to throw more spinning attacks he needs to throw more kicks he throws more kicks and then everyone's then saying oh no he should he didn't he couldn't throw, he shouldn't have thrown them because he wasn't conditioning enough he didn't have the inadequate training he, he's not been active enough it's like choose your you know you, you got to choose your position if anything he's a he's kind of um if you look back at his tape he's known for throwing loads of kicks right this is what connor does t kicks body kicks head kicks leg kicks like that's what he does maybe the calf kick is new but in terms of everything else you know we, we've known connor for being really kick heavy and of course being able to kind of throw that left hand and knock people's lights out so he obviously did it he did it he kind of answered that point then sometime between that first round Dustin must have checked the kick because I didn't really believe I thought my initial feeling was that maybe he had loads of micro fractures and maybe because of the lack of conditioning you know, the lack of maybe activity in terms of he's not fighting often enough to kind of keep his legs as strong as possible that might have happened in terms of breaking it but I was more of the thinking that he either checked it or it was a micro fracture that he had prior in training that obviously then got exasperated when he was fighting. But then when you look closely at the actual fight itself, I think Dustin, first of all, said it was a check that he felt something go in the Connor's leg. But then if you actually look at the video um, footage, I think maybe 15 seconds before the end of the first round, um, Connor goes to, I think if I'm not mistaken, he goes to T-kick, um, Dustin Poirier in the stomach and Dustin Poirier kind of covers and puts his elbows and brings his elbows together to kind of cover his um, abdomen um, which obviously you could tell it was starting to affect him those kicks to the T and then as he's covering his abdomen um, Connor's shin hits the bottom of his elbow and it kind of pop kind of snaps a little bit there already and obviously as he's stepping back to kind of you know throw um, his left hand as um, Dustin pointed out at the end of the fight it then obviously completely breaks and it's kind of you know it's obviously incredibly disgusting to see um, his entire leg kind of give way and his ankle go the complete opposite way and he's kind of screaming for agony and then by then of course the fight is obviously called off um doctor says he can't continue to fight anymore and the fight is over but it's just funny to see the referee and the, and the coaches and the doctors look at him and say are you all right it's like he's clearly not his leg is his foot is twisted the other way i'm not sure if they're trying to check if he could still fight but it was definitely 
over from there and then they got into a bit of an argument and kind of cussing and swearing match back and forth which you know people can read as much into it as they want I think for the most part yes maybe Connor kind of overstepped the mark by saying he went to murder Dustin Poirier he's going to leave in a stretcher and again the irony of that it was Connor kind of ended up leaving in a stretcher himself and I think the memes are going to write itself in that way but I don't think I don't really read too much into that I think if anything what this basically proved is that Connor is just too rich he's too affluent he's too wealthy he's too successful outside of UFC for this to matter I think for the most part the origins of MMA the origins of this kind of cage fighting in general has very humble beginnings but it also requires people to kind of have um a lot kind of riding on it right you kind of have to have your family's future your family's ability to eat and to have shelter and to have a warm home in the back of your head to make it make sense because most people don't want to do that right most people don't want to go into a cage which is locked and fight another man to the death effectively it's not something that comes natural to a lot of people so you need to have a real extrinsic motivation for it to make sense and unfortunately for Connor, he's like you know he just made so much money early on in his career it probably is different difficult to kind of wake up and make that make sense and to kind of go in there with a the drive and the dog needed in order to beat someone like a Dustin Poirier who is a very very well-rounded MMA fighter and again that goes away from the skill I think just motivation that's of a, so it's obviously a concern and again when you go into the skill aspect of it you look at the top 10 in his weight class at the moment I, I think I think the other day about it and I was saying maybe of the top 10 people now in the UFC in Connor's weight class maybe the worst in there and worse than air quotes is Benil Dariush and I think Benil Dariush beats Conor McGregor right so the worst person in the top 10 Conor probably couldn't beat so the idea of him becoming champion or competing at the highest level of his weight class just isn't likely you know could he even give imagine Conor versus Dustin Justin Gaethje for instance right I mean that'll be a complete bloodbath so I don't necessarily think it kind of favors Conor anymore unfortunately I don't say the sports moved on but I just think his skill set his inability to defend takedowns it just doesn't necessarily necessarily bode well in that kind of weight class everyone there is fairly well rounded and they can do the dirty and ugly quote-unquote stuff or the stuff that Connor thinks doesn't really count as a win it doesn't necessarily favor him too much um so that basically sees it and um, but unfortunately um because he's such a big cash cow I think allegedly the numbers are he got like 20 million for the fight alone and then I've read something that it was the third highest gate of all time in UFC history if that's the case then unfortunately we're gonna see a full fight and again because of all the afters and you know Dustin Poirier's wife flipping um, um, Conor McGregor off in a ring which was really great to see actually that was quite funny and they're back and forth and stuff and the murdering and all this sort of stuff like for sure we're gonna see a full fight just because it's gonna generate clicks and people are gonna buy the pay-per-views but in terms of a sporting event and the competition there is no need to see a full fight you know there is no need Dustin Poirier is clearly the better fighter we're not gonna get any questions answered even if Con does win what the, what then are we then gonna go to a fourth fifth fight to kind of decide the actual series itself kind of you know resolutely it just doesn't make any sense going forward I think I think you should just leave it as that but I'm sure they're gonna continue um pushing forward but yeah Dustin Poirier performed pretty well I think he basically demonstrated towards the end of the first round that he probably was the better all-round MMA fighter and if the fight did continue it probably was all going to go one way but I don't think it was a foregone conclusion I still think there was a possibility that if it would have carried on and Conor didn't break his leg there was every possibility that he could have caught Dustin on the inside um you know rushing in um exchanges because I think with hands wise boxing wise even though Dustin probably I really like the way he kind of bobs and weaves and steps back and stuff and has really good feints I still think the ability for Connor to slip and line that left hand was always going to be there in the back of his head so that was definitely a possibility but in terms of demonstrating who's a better MMA fighter or UFC fighter in general Dustin Poirier proved that resoundingly really so there is no need for them to kind of go back and forth we got here an article from MMA Mania coach Conor McGregor's coach breaks down the loss and future plans uh da, da, da. he said here um he said oh, it didn't work out that way let's see what he says about the Conor McGregor's coach he said yeah the coach says the following he's in hospital right now um this is coach Kavanaugh I'll be heading over there after check checking to check in on him um you know it's a bitter pill to swallow this sport has the highest highs and lowest lows we got to take some time to assess the next move is obviously now rehab and recovery is where it's at Kavanaugh broke down the fight exchange by exchange he said this I studied Poirier a lot on the fence he fights with Holloway for example and I knew Dustin's head would be there for the guillotine so we had drilled that a lot Conor 
Connor has a very strong guillotine, a slight tactical error to go into the back, going to the back with it. We drilled getting the finish on the feet or at least get making the takedown attempt go away. Then we'd get back to the centre of the octagon and back into boxing. Yeah, I think someone said that actually in the commentary. I think it was DC. Um, I think there is this thinking, I guess, in MMA, if you go for the guillotine against the cage, but you don't land it, it kind of opens you up to getting um, pinned up against the side of the cage. And if somebody has superior grappling, basically mauling you, which ended up happening, you know, Dustin was landing a couple of elbows and a couple of big bombs there on the side of the cage because you've got nowhere to run. I guess the... Uh, the obvious thing to do would be to kind of try to get a team in the center of the ring or the center of the octagon. So then you have more space to kind of your hands in and kind of get it right up against somebody's throat. But, you know, um, grappling isn't probably Connor's forte in that respect. It continues here. He says, as somebody who likes guillotines myself, the temptation to try and throw that leg over the back and just get the finish is very, very strong. And Connor was the same one in there. He must have thought the grip was right and he went for it. That's what fighting's about. He went for it. Dustin did an incredible job getting his leg over to the right side of the head to relieve the pressure. Definitely true. Um, you can, yeah, and he's just a wizard at that, isn't it? So it was unlikely he was going to land. It would have been cr crazy, though, if that actually happened, right? If Conor McGregor was able to land a flipping guillotine and end it via that way, especially after saying that those kind of victories don't actually count. That would have been funny. He continues, it says, as for Poirier's ground and pound, which was severe looking enough for the two judges to hand him a 10-8 round. Nothing to worry about, said the coach. Kind of, he said, there was a bit of a struggle to get the head free and then he landed some decent ground and pound. Most of them on the forearm and the gloves. Connor had no marks, no bruises, no swelling or cuts, anything like that. So most of it was parried. But for sure, that was Dustin's moment. He obviously, he was obviously winning there in the judges' eyes when Dustin stood up, Connor got off some spikes. Connor got off some up kicks. Some of them whizzed by and others landed. So all and all, up until that point, let's say four and a half minutes, I wasn't concerned at all. I was actually really happy. And I knew that I was going to say, and I knew I was going to see in between rounds. I was just going to tell him to go, to keep going and doing what he was doing with the kicks to try and close a bit heavier um, this time. So we'd be looking uh, at, sorry, so we'd be looking to rather exchange punches to side back and left hand, like he did to Aldo, look for those kicks, kind of techniques, slide back, left cross, slide back left uppercut and kind of let Dustin fall into that kind of open space at the four and a half minute mark everything's gravy everything looked good technique looked good a few adjustments uh, and then I thought we were going to track to keep on finishing there and to keep it going keep the rip I don't know, man. I think obviously there's a market for Conor McGregor's fights because he's big draw. He's obviously the only real superstar there. I think if you saw the the electricity and the hype that was in that arena when he came into the ring, you know, he commands the attention. He commands the headlines. He's all over all the press. You just look at this the stuff I have here on my um, list of news sites that are covering the UFC 264, right? BBC, The Independent, Evening Standard, Sky Sports, MMA Sports, The Sun um loads of different sites bt paddy power yahoo sports like he commands the headlines so he's a big draw but in terms of a uh, competition and in being competing for the belt i just don't see it personally but we can continue here says comments it's a basic silence it's talking to you people like me i think this is the caption right it's funny as well this this is a clip from of joe rogan sitting down with connor on the side of the ring talking to him with his leg broken there was a moment where c joe was uh, being super sanctimonious and talking about how he's never going to interview people that are knocked out and he did interview people that have knocked out since then. And then now he's interviewing a guy with a broken leg. <laughs> and it's like, oh, but anyway, what can you do? Uh, there's a picture here of Connor being left um, taken out on a stretcher. 
So he obviously talks to his football with his legs, obviously, in a cast. So his captain says, you know, people like me, obviously kind of leaning. It feels like he's really leaning into the Hill persona more so. I think that whole kind of gracious, um, magnanimous Trump character didn't work for him. It obviously didn't gym up as needed. Like I said, I just think he's just too rich. So he has to kind of give himself, um, he has to give himself a reason to get angry and to want to fuck people up. And, you know, what better way than to create this kind of fake persona where you're just this you against the world when it worked when he was, you know, um, an up and up and a kind of, you know, um, going against the system, you know, doing things as he wanted, coming late to press conferences and stuff because he thought he was a big draw, wearing fur mink coats and all that stuff. But now that he's legitimately, driving Rolls races topless with his kids in the car like it's just not the same in it it's just too wealthy to it to make sense unfortunately um which probably really is which probably maybe explains oh it's a quote from scarface okay any people like me which probably explains why um we probably should give somebody like a floyd mayweather a lot of his flowers earlier on in it because floyd mayweather is kind of you know again undefeated made more money than god in the fight of but in the sport of boxing and still seems to have that hunger and that drive to prove himself athletically um in competition of course you know recently with the logan paul stuff but just in general he's always up for a scrap he always seems to be in great shape um that definitely goes to show that it's definitely not something that should be taken for granted because you know conor mcgregor has shown now that sometimes with great wealth comes um that Dustin gets the belt so it's great to see he's kind of always got like a great rapport with my McGregor fighters as well so hopefully he gets a chance to get that belt around his waist before they suck into the next Rupert Ford fight in between them but he should do anyway because I think Conor should be out for like a year so hopefully that makes sense hopefully that makes sense